Majdaleh. Welcome to Stand for Truth podcast. Today I have a special guest, Abuna Jean from Bat Moron. Welcome to the podcast, Abuna. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you for coming on board. And uh, if you can start us off with a prayer. Sure. We ask you, O oh Lord Jesus, to bless this moment, to send your, your Holy Spirit in order to speak in us and to give us the grace to make everything for the glory of your name, of the glory of the Trinity. We ask you this by the intercession of the Holy Virgin, Saint Maroon, and all the saints. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abune. Thank you. Thank you for coming on board. Um, we had Abuna Tanyos last time um, in Arabic, and we've got you on here speaking English. I know English isn't your first language, correct? Sure. My language is Arabic. You speak Arabic and other languages too? Yeah, French. French? Italian? Yeah, okay. yeah a little bit. So he's um, he's joining us and he's going to be speaking English today, which is great. Last time we had Abuna Tanyos and he was explaining the living life of Bat Maroon. Um, how can we as lay people live this Bat Maroon life in our own homes? Is the question I want to ask you. Yeah, this is a very important question actually. And uh, this is one of the main pur purposes of Beit Maroon. Because traditionally, in the Maronite church, it's very important that the lay people would live the same spirituality as monks. And many years ago, and we can say it even today, especially for those who are living around monasteries, used to live in the same way and pray the same prayers as monks even if they are in their little families, as the monks are live in their monastery in bigger families. So they used to take the spirituality and spiritual director from monks and live the same prayers in their houses in their daily life. So it's very important today to have a spiritual director and as monks to give that opportunity for people. But before we go outside the monastery, we must be so authentic in our living, in our living for our spirituality, and then to go outside of the monastery to give that light for people. Are you saying spiritual director as in me or my wife or my friend, we have to have, for us to have a spiritual director just like you do? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Choosing to live a saint life as saints used to do is to choose a spiritual director and how we do it we ask the holy spirit to guide us to do that and we ask the holy virgin to give us a priest a dad or even sometimes a nun if they have a very good spiritual experience and to share with us and to help us on how to translate that spirituality that we pray to be in our daily life, which is very, very important, especially in those days where we can see a lot of difficulties, a lot of temptations, and where the devil especially is trying to defeat the unity of the family. I think it's extremely important, Abuna, because, I mean, obviously you're my spiritual director, um, and I know from living my life in Australia, whenever I have people come to me with issues and problems in the faith or trying to ask a question about the faith, I always ask that question, do you have a spiritual director? Probably 99% of the time they say no. And that's where it's very important that if you're reading the Bible and you're not understanding something, you can go back to the spiritual director. I know me and my wife, whenever we're, we're talking about work, we're talking about raising our child, we always go to you for spiritual direction. And this is what's kept us in our spiritual life. So I think it's very important that people in Australia or Lebanon or anyone's watching around the world to... to to find yourself a spiritual director, it's key for your spiritual life, correct? 100%. That doesn't mean that I can go in spiritual life and religious life without a priest or a spiritual director. But in order to have someone who have a little bit more of discern, or at least maybe we, you can be more sane than me. But the point is to make that path together together, praying together, and to choose the will of the Holy Spirit in our life. Because we choose 
as a family, to live the sanctity. As we said in our sacrament, the first day when we said yes, that yes was yes to your wife, but it was a yes for God to accept his will in our life. How can we discern that in our daily lives? And this is where the spiritual director comes to help us to do that and to translate the language of revelation of the Bible to translate it in a practical ways in our life. This uh, spiritual director would be in layman terms something like a coach, correct? Like, uh, for example, I mean, uh, Michael Jordan was the best basketballer that ever lived, had a coach. He had to, he had to go back to his coach. So any sports player has a coach. Anyone who pl does anything has a mentor. So is that what a spiritual director, but for, for your spiritual life, is that what it is? If that image can help people, yeah, uh, I would accept it. Okay. Uh, but it's very important to say that it is the choice of the person to say yes. So okay. I'd be here for a support. I'd be here to pray with you, but I can take the decisions instead of you. Do all the monks and the brothers, in, like so the brothers, for example, that are in Bat Moron at the moment, the ones that are with you guys, yeah. they, they all have spiritual directors? Every monk should okay. have a spiritual director. Do you know if St. Shabo had a spiritual director? Definitely. From, okay. okay. Definitely. Wow. And so if the saints had them, then... We should absolutely choose and ask the Holy Spirit because it is the will of God to have a spiritual director and especially because with him we can live the obedience and through him we can choose and find the obedience of God. Again, I say it is not uh, impossible to become a saint without him, but it's very important, especially that the monks live the vow of obedience and Jesus died on the cross because of, of his obedience to his father and becoming saint means that I want to imitate Jesus, the saint, the holy, okay? So to become like him. Obedience is a tough one, Abuna. I, I, I see a lot of people asking the questions, for example, if the spiritual director or the church says something that I don't like, I don't agree with. Okay. How am I going to be obedient to something I don't agree with? Okay. So, yeah, you understand it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And for many, many times, I can hear people uh, choosing what they want to, uh, to be obedient to, to the church, and to choose not to be obedient in other things. So the point is, how I look to my mother, the church, and I used very carefully the term mother, because it was chosen by Jesus on the cross when his heart was opened, he chose the church to be a mother for us. And when I speak like that, I mean that that mother me wants the good, the spiritual good for me. And when it is guided by the Holy Spirit, when it comes to the teaching and the good for the people, it will be the will and the discernment and the words of the Holy Spirit through the inspiration wow. to the church. And it is not Abu Najan or any bishop or any patriarch that wants uh, for a certain moment to choose that direction. It is not like that. So I choose to be obedient to the church, to the Holy Spirit. And this is where I can find my sanctity. Okay, that's great. I mean, it's wonderful to hear. And having a spiritual director, like for example, can I have one as a family or do I, I choose one for myself or my wife? Is it you can do both, okay. but it is better to choose one for the whole family. Okay. And sometimes it is also better to choose the same one who did the sacrament of marriage of us. Okay. Okay. If not, wherever I am in the world, I can just pray and you will see that the Holy Virgin will guide you to find wow. that one. But for the whole family, that is, that is definitely better. Why? Because if the choice of being saints for now on, it doesn't uh, concern me, but concerns the whole family. And that father, as you know, your kids, that spiritual director will know my family, will know the need, spiritual needs, even human needs of, of my family, and he can guide each one specifically in the sense that uh, I can't guide everyone in the same way. Each okay. one has his own talent, his own way to find it through the Holy Spirit by the, the guidance or the coach, as you said, yes. of the spiritual director. Because I think also like having the spiritual director would be good to have that spiritual director for confession 
you don't have to have him as your confession priest all the time, but it'd be good too because, for example, if I went to you for confession with some family issues, okay, and six months later I go to another priest, I have to retell the whole story again, whereas if I have that spiritual director, I could actually, you know, don't have to, I don't have to start from the beginning. He knows my life background. Is that correct? Is 100%. That, yeah, okay. uh, sometimes we make a little uh, separation between confession and spiritual, uh, the spiritual director, because in the confession, I can choose any priest, any priest, because I just need the sacrament. But definitely, if one priest can do both, and he knows me, why not? And especially for the guidance. 100%. Okay. okay. And with other things other than spiritual director, what else can we do as a family? Like you said, look, I know you said about living a life like the monks, but I'm working nine to five. I've got my kids at the schools. I've got a gym. I've got this. I've got friends. How am I going to do the seven daily prayers and the two hours reading the Bible and, and the stuff, all those things that you guys do that Abu Natanas was speaking about? It's virtually impossible to do all that as a lay person. Okay. The most important, uh, again, I'm not trying to be a, a saint like Saint Sharbil. I'm trying to imitate the way he, he have find his way, his talent to become a saint in that specific moment, in that specific area, in that specific monastery. The point is how I can find my, my way, okay, to, let's say, baptize my day mm. in the way the monks are, use, uh, are doing that. Okay. okay. So start the day with? With my prayers. Okay. And then... Uh, I will consecrate my, my my whole day to the to the to Jesus, okay. to the Holy Virgin, to her heart, and I can do all my steps and uh, through the prayers, ask the Holy Spirit. In two hours, three hours, I will stop again my work, and then I will pray. And the point is, the blessing of my family, the blessing, uh, material blessing, comes from my work or it is from God. So I will stop everything at 12 o'clock, let's say, I, may, I will make another prayer. At 3 o'clock, I will, I will stop everything. And for three minutes in my work, three minutes, two minutes, I can meditate. I put the cross on my desk. I will meditate the, 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 the cross of Jesus. I can read two minutes in the Bible. And then at night when I come back, I can pray with my family, the rosary or other things. Can I pray so, the rosary while I'm driving? I mean, some people have the, the audio. Or, can yeah. you do that? Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. If you're on the road for two hours a day. Okay. Why am I allowed in my car to, to be distracted in many things and to, to become angry in the car and I'm not allowed to speak to God? Okay. So definitely, when I'm driving, when I'm cooking, when I'm doing everything, I can pray. But... When I praying, can I do something else? No. So when I come to pray, I will only pray. So that means at that specific moment, when I consecrate that time only for God and to be with God. Mm -hmm. So again, yeah, I can cook and pray, but, but when I come to prayers, I will stop everything else. Mm -hmm. So at night, why? Can't we pray with my, uh, can I pray uh, with my family? It's very important. So at that moment, at that day, you have five prayers, each five, 10 minutes, two minutes. And at night, I will do it 15 minutes. Okay. I read the Bible with my family. Is it important? It's very, very important. So in that, in that way, are you doing and living the same spirituality of monks who consecrate and uh, distribute the prayers uh, uh, to, to the whole day in that sense that the whole day will become prayers. Okay. In that moment, when I have that good habitude through the Holy Spirit, whatever you will do will become a prayer because your heart, your head, your tongue, your, your beats, uh, 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 the beats of your heart will be looking and thinking of Jesus. Wow. This is the prayers. Wow, so you basically everything around you is Christ-like. 100%. Okay, it's beautiful. Um, question that comes to mind as well, uh, praying together as a family, protecting your family. In today's society, there's so much persecution. Being a Christian, especially living in Australia, in America, Canada, 
I mean, even Lebanon, um, this persecution towards being a Christian. How do I protect my family? How do I uh, take my child to a school when everybody is against Catholics or against Christianity or you're seeing what's on TV these days or what's going on? How do I protect my family? How do I smother my family with okay. Christ and protect them? Because they're going to be persecuted for being Christian in today's world. Yes. Okay. As I see uh, things, I can say first, it's very important to know my enemy in order to know his weakness to attack him by the spiritual weapon. What do I mean? It's very important first to see that the enemy of the church, the liar, which is the devil, is trying to defeat the family. And the first family is the church. Mm -hmm. And he's doing all the best to attack the church, whether the shepherd or the people, the lay, uh, the, the lay people, he's trying to infiltrate for some, from somewhere. Some, sometimes he's do, uh, uh, he succeeded, but because it is the family. Uh, the family unit. Yeah, the, uh, made by Jesus on the cross, he will never, he the can family. never do it. There is a second family, a second church, which is the little church, the house church. It's very important. He's trying to attack. When the father is defeated, everyone will be defeated. When the mother is defeated, everyone will be defeated. So it's very important as parents to find my way and to try to find my spiritual weapon in order to attack. So now I'll ask you, you want to defeat the devil and you're afraid of Australia or Lebanon or uh, the, the, the word uh, things that are uh, trying to defeat the family, why are you afraid? I'm afraid of you. Why? Because if you don't pray, and if you don't open the Bible in your house, and you don't leave the sacraments, yes, I'm afraid of you, not of okay, them. Okay. So why you are trying to defeat, uh, to, to, to attack and to, to make a reaction for something that it is something that we should be afraid, but again, try to start with yourself. This is very important. And Jesus told us, whenever there is light, the darkness is, w w can, be, can stand there. Mm -hmm. So if you are light and you give that light by your words, by your prayers, by your example to your kids, can someone defeat them? No. Nah. Because that light is the light of Jesus. And when you give the body of the Christ and the word of God to your kids and you send them like yeast, like, like the light to the word, you can defeat them. So start being, uh, stop being afraid of... of uh, so start following Christ yeah. in every angle, every way of your life. This is the way to do it. And then you shouldn't fear anything. 100%. Okay. okay. So now again, I'm afraid if you don't, uh, if you don't confess because you're not taking... The sacrament of confession. I'm afraid if you don't take the rosary. I'm afraid if your kids are all, all the time on the phone and never meditate the word of God. I'm afraid that you don't live with your family and even eat food together. Why is it so important? When you are at the church, do we eat together? The food prepared by God himself, sent from heaven to be on the altar and to, be, uh, to eat it. Okay, and to have the strength, this is the unity from the food. That's why even simple things in family to eat together means to be attached to that unity yeah. and reflected in all things in our life. Do we do vacations, holidays together? Very important, important for the kids. So how do we change the society? This is how we start in ourselves and we grow and we give examples for our other families. If your friend have, a, have a problems with his wife and his family, now you can give him words, you can give him the example, you can guide him because of what you are living. Mm -hmm. So you have a spiritual director guiding you and now you are the example to guide others. This is how the light grows in the world. Wow. And this is how the devil is afraid of us. So let's start doing our spiritual job as a, a spiritual army. 
this is how we do it. You did mention reading the Bible. Okay, so we, we, we read the Bible at home. A lot of people these days, you sit there and, they, you know, they read the Bible, they interpret it how they want. How does one sit down with his family or himself and read the Bible and understand it if there's, in in the Christian world now, apart from the, the Catholic and Orthodox, there's, there's like 42,000 denominations of Protestants. Everyone reads the Bible and interprets it how they want. How dangerous can it be if I'm reading the Bible at home by myself? How am I going to know if I'm understanding it properly? Okay. What's, can you give us some advice? Uh, sure. This is very, uh, an important question. And many, many people are struggling, especially when I ask them I, and I beg them to start reading the Bible. In, in two weeks, three weeks, they are discouraged because of the difficulties in the text, yeah. especially when they start to read the Old Testament. Yes. Definitely, I can't deny it that there are some difficulties. And the scholars, till now, they have many difficulties to, to understand the text, okay, uh, some texts. But I'm speaking of a revelated, inspired book, revelated book. That means, who gave that book? The Holy Spirit. Yeah. And who can explain that same word who have revelated that Holy word? Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So now I will ask you, do you have the Holy Spirit in your family? You will tell me definitely, Father, because I was baptized. And I became the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if you have the Holy Spirit, do you have that good habitude to have a good open spiritual ear to his inspirations? He wants to share with you the explanations because he knows that through the, through the word, you will have the light, okay? And through the word, you'll become like Jesus, the word of God. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah, was going to say, but for example, I have the Holy Spirit, I'm reading the Bible, and this person next to me believes they have the Holy Spirit, and they're okay. reading the Bible, and they're understanding it. This is the, the second point that okay, uh, I'm talking about. Perfect. Okay. The church uh, teach us that it is very important to have two places uh, of, of a sort of continuation of our prayers. It starts first in the church. Why? Since I am attached to the body of the Christ and it is through the church that the Holy Spirit will give his talents, anyone that has a talent, it is given not for him to be selfish in that talent. It is given because of the need of the church. So whenever you, you want to have that gift, okay, or the explanation of the word, you just need to start in the church. And that comes in the sacrament of the Eucharist. For the first part is the word of God. It is very important to be very attentive to the Holy Spirit in order to start understanding the word of God. And then when I come back to the word, after taking the body of the Christ, do, the, do you remember the text of the two disciples of Emmaus? When Jesus broke the bread, mm. their, their eyes were opened. And that means two things. Because Jesus was explaining the word of the Old Testament mm -hmm. and of the sacrament, the body. Then they recognized him. Yes, because we need to have an opened eyes in order to recognize him through the word and then through the Eucharist. That starts with him. That starts with that sacrament. Yes, okay? yes, okay. So the first revelation starts from the altar. When I, when I take the body of the Christ, everything will be clearer for me. And then I'll come back to the house. I'll become uh, uh, like a church because the body of Christ is inside my heart. And then I'll open but that light, by that light, the word of God. And then, when I'm in my house, you need to have perseverance. It's very important to defeat the devil of being discouraged. He tries everything to stop, uh, to stop you from taking and uh, from drinking from that uh, drink that comes from the, word, uh, from the Bible. Do you know when you open the Bible, it is God himself that is speaking to you. And many people will tell me, oh, I can't listen uh, God. 
Where is he? He's in the Bible. He's here in the church. So when I have that attentive ear to understand the word of God, when you open it, you will understand it. Third, when you read the Bible in a community, will Jesus be there? He said, whenever two uh, come together, three gather in my yeah, name. God will be there. So if the word of God is between us and we are reading that word of God in the family, hmm. God himself will be explaining the word of God. So you want, again, a glorification, a revelation of Jesus, that revelation will be in your house as it is in the church. So while you are searching here and here and you have all the sources of light, you can drink, drink all the, the water that comes from the heart of Jesus to be blessed and cleansed, you can do it in your house. Why you are searching here and here? Why you are afraid? Can a devil defeat a family who has the word of God opened? Because God will, will stand there and he will be himself protecting that family. Uh, we are afraid. No, we're not afraid. I'm afraid of you if you don't do that. Very powerful. Very powerful. That comes to a, a question kind of linked to that where some people might say to you, or they say to me, or they say to anyone, why does God, who loves us, allow suffering? Why, why do people have cancer? Why are there rapists? Why are there people that are disabled? Why is all this stuff that's going on in the world at the moment? Why does God allow this suffering? If God really exists, is what people say, not me, but people say it all the time, if God existed, then why does all this happen? Okay. Sorry to ask you the question. Uh, it is very important. No, no, no. Many people are asking the same question. Before responding directly, can I ask you first, why the saints are begging Jesus for crosses, for pain, suffering, for suffering, and I, as a Christian who loves Saint Rafa, am afraid of the cross, and I escape. And that means that there is something in the spiritual logic that they can understand. I am not there to understand it. So the suffering brings you to understand Christ's suffering? Is that what This is? is the point. So first, if Jesus carried his cross and once he took spiritually, when he took the cross, he was so happy thirsty to take that cross because he knows through that suffering, through that cross, he will become, that same cross will be the tree of life. And that tree of life was the, in the garden of Eden, where we can take the, 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 the fruit of living, of life, of eternity. And because of our sins, we were forbidden to be there. So with the suffering, Jesus is very happy because he's accomplishing by the obedience, the will of God. Again, he will open the door of, of, of the Garden of Eden in order to let us enter again. So, is Jesus afraid of the, of the cross? He's thirsty. He wants to take the cross, even, of the, uh, bec even if there are pains. Because through that pains, he's begging you to take your sins in order to put them in his body. And the text says, he became sin. He's not a sinner. Mm. But he took our sins. Yes, yes. Look at, uh, at uh, the nicest image that God made through the cross and how he defeated the death. Then the, comes the saints. When they understood that logic, they were begging Jesus to let them share a little bit in that I'll suffering. suffering. Okay. So Saint Rita did not put, uh, how do we call the, the thorns? Th yeah, she only asked Jesus for one single thorn, and from many decades we're still speaking of whom of Saint Rita, because of the example that she lived for us as a mom and then as a nun, on how as Christians we should accept sufferings. So. The second point is how to look at the cross. Is it a curse 
Or if it is there, we should ask Jesus to make it as a blessing. This is the best opportunity, the golden opportunity coming from heaven that will give you the opportunity to, to become like Jesus, not only in, uh, in sharing love, uh, living uh, the obedience, but also to carry the cross. If you want to be like Jesus, you need to follow the steps of Jesus in every single moment. Why do, are we afraid as Christians? When it comes to the step of carrying the cross, everyone will leave it. I want that part from Jesus to imitate him in, in that, in the preaching, in living those things, mercy, act of mercy, but we're afraid to leave the cross. Being saint meaning means to follow Jesus in every single steps, especially the cross, because through the cross will be a tree of life even for others. Why, what, what, I, what do I mean? St. Paul says, I will continue in my body what uh, misses uh, from the suffering of Jesus. This is not a good English. In my that's fine, that's how I understand. <laughs> Definitely, the suffer sufferings of Jesus are perfect, are complete. But when a saint, because he's part of that body of the Christ, will share, will live that same cross, baptized in the cross of Jesus, in the same logic, will become a source of life for others. We took all life, all eternity from that body, because Jesus says, whoever eats my body and drinks my blood oh will have eternal life, right? How can I live this as a parent, as a dad, as a mom, as a Christian? When you're carrying a blessed cross like Jesus, your words, your example, everything you're living will become like Jesus and will become again a sort of life for others, as Jesus did. You want to defeat the devil? Devil, I will ask you again once more, are you carrying in your house the cross of Jesus or you are afraid? Now I'll come back to your question. Are you afraid of having uh, um, pain or uh, um, how to say it? Uh, uh, sickness. Uh, sickness. Sickness or other things. Whatever you want, any sickness. In that logic, I will not care uh, it is cancer or other, other things. I don't care, even death. In that logic will become a sort of blessing and open doors of heaven in order to take all the blessings that Jesus gave from wow. where? From his heart. So when someone suffers and he offers and his family offers that pain with Jesus, that suffering will become like a sort of, uh, of the heart of Jesus that gives blessing for others. It's very, what you're saying, it just opened up my eyes to something. When we're praying for a lot of people that have cancer or dying or in comas, I notice a lot of people start to pray. Do you know what happens at that moment? No. Before asking for being healed, which, which is, we can do it, definitely. Uh, ask for God's will? Yes. And we're asking Jesus to transform spiritually that pain to imitate his pain on the cross. And this is very important. And when parents, and this is the last point I will uh, speak about that, I will ask you, are you meditating? Are you praying? Only the, the only person that can make that path, which is very hard, I can't deny it. If they are meditating and praying, the cross of Jesus and the pain of Jesus will only be possible for them to understand that cross. If they are not praying, they cannot understand, understand that logic and will refuse that pain and refuse God again. One last thing, yes, very yes, important. Yes. Who was there at the cross when Jesus was carrying his cross and he died on the cross? The Holy Virgin. His mother. His mother. Ah, So if we have a pain, a sorrowful thing in our family, Will the Holy Virgin be there? Definitely, because we were given to her as sons on the cross by Jesus. And second, if that cross is also 
lived in the same way as her son Jesus, as a suffering for salvations for others, the Holy Virgin will be in that family next to that son, next, next to the one who is sick, and she will be taking care of him personally. Why do you miss that opportunity? You actually answered the question I was going to answer, ask you now, because I was going to ask you now, a lot of people on social media who are maybe not Catholic or lukewarm Catholic and not understanding will criticize and say, you've mentioned St. Rita, St. Shabel, the Virgin Mary. Why, why are you worshiping these um, people? You know, the, the questions will come out. Why do you pray to Mary? Why do you pray to these saints? We can just pray directly to God. And you half answered the question already. So uh, I used my word very, uh, perfectly uh, in a way that I haven't used worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I looked at them as a good example. Okay. And I looked at them as parts of that spiritual body, mystical body of the Christ. And then if you can pray for me, why can those who lived in, in Christ, their spiritual work in that body will stop? And furthermore, biblically, from the Bible, who was at the cross, the Holy Virgin. Am I creating that? No. She was there. And she was given to us as a mom. I'm her son by John the Beloved. So if someone is suffering the same pain of Jesus, she won't be there. Definitely she would be there. So because really you're asking for her praise. Definitely. You're not worshipping her. Definitely. Yeah, of course. She's my mom. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is absolutely right. I have that right to do it. She's my mom. She's taking care of me Okay. to become like Jesus. Why do you read this spiritually and that text, very important text, at a decisive moment at the cross, you, you can't read it spiritually. Why you make that separation? So I think the Catholic Church in that tradition is, is followed, is stepped, uh, stepping by the Holy Spirit. Okay, beautiful. Very important. One last thing, Abune. Um, there's, there's a... There's a I think that Abu Natanus mentioned as well that, for example, you you as monks have hermitages and you go out in the wilderness and you spend a few days um, in the monastery. And and I used to think this before, and I've had a few people ask me, why would you as a monk spend two, three days, four days in a monastery or in the wilderness when you can go out and confessions, bless people, visit people at the hospitals, those two, three, four days or whatever days you spend in the wilderness, wouldn't it be more important for you to be spending them in the mission where you're going out to people instead of you, some might say, being selfish and just sitting there praying on your own? Okay. Sorry to be blunt, no, no, but that's no, no, a question no. that, that comes up. Again, many are asking the same question because they feel the need of having monks or uh, consecrated people next to them. That's right. Which is a right for the church. Uh, uh, I... I have the right to see consecrated people next okay. to me. Again, as I said, who gives the talent for the church? Not for me. It is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So if the Holy Spirit gave that discernment for uh, some priest to start Beit Marun by the blessing of the church, Bishop Hanna Rahmi, okay, who gave them that inspiration? It is the Holy Spirit. So instead of asking me, ask the Holy Spirit and pray with me in order to have the good discernment for the good of the church. Again, if you have a talent, it is placed by the hand of the church. Mm -hmm. The talent is never something for me. This is first. Second, there are many types of consecrated people. Some will choose to be in the monastery and never, never go out. Some will live all the time with people. With yeah. sick people. Some will have schools, universities. Some will have hospitals to heal Jesus, the sick, sick Jesus. So this is a talent. This is another one. And this is another one. Our talent is to be in the wilderness and start our life in the wilderness, but for the people. Is there a biblical meaning? Definitely. Okay. It's very important. Why? Let's start with St. Charbel. He was selfish. He wants to love Jesus alone when he was in her hermitage uh, yep. there in that mountain. Yep. Never. He was okay. there for the people. 
I thought, oh, see, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I understand, yeah. So he's on that mountain for his people because for the he people. loves the body of the Christ. And he doesn't love, he's so, uh, he, he can feel the pain of Jesus when he sees someone, uh, sees someone living in, uh, uh, okay. in, uh, so, in, in sin. Uh, in sin. So when he's there on his mountain, he's praying for the whole people. Okay, look what he's doing. Jesus was di died on the cross, right? Yep. Uh, and on the Mount of Gol Golgotha. Yes. When Saint Charbel chose a monastery or the Hermitage, he's like Jesus who carried his cross oh, and he wow. went up to that mountain oh, wow. to imitate Jesus in the cross and in his death. And he died there. Okay, so is Saint Charbel afraid of his cross? He's so happy because that cross will make him live one in the Christ. But again, was the Jesus uh, the cross of Jesus for himself or was it for the whole people, for the whole, whole humanity, the same as Saint Charbel? Look at Saint Charbel now, the biggest missionary in the world. He's everywhere. So when he was there, he was spreading the light, going by the wings of the Holy Spirit to be in all houses. Even if sometimes his superior used to ask him to go for a specific mission. But the majority of his time was there uh, uh, in, yes, in yes, the yes, yes. And he was there with the painful life. And that comes again. He's searching for the cross. Is Saint Charbel uh, not a wise person to choose to 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 be uh, to go on his knee, uh, knee, uh, Yirka. Yes. For many hours, for no reason. No, he's choosing a cross that makes him with Jesus with such of love. Okay. Now, let's go to the Bible. Yeah, I was going to ask you because yeah. somebody might say Saint Shabbat was in the Bible. Uh -huh. Give me an example from yeah. the Bible. Usually, I start from the Bible. Yeah, 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 no, now I give the example to start. You're why. answering the question before I ask it. Okay. Let's look first of the source of our life, Jesus. When he started his mission life, missionary life, where he started? He went to be baptized by John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit came upon him. And then the text says he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness hmm. to be tempted. Tempted. Tempted, sorry. So... It's very, very important that Jesus is choosing to be separated from the people. It is for the people. Even in the daily life of Jesus, the text says many times that he was separated. He, he chose a, a, a wilderness place, a quiet place in order to go and pray. And then again, before he starts his day, he goes to the people. It's very important. He prays his dead. Jesus definitely doesn't need to, yeah, to pray. Yeah, it is wow. for our, uh, an example so for us. If, if Jesus himself did it, then we definitely Who have to do it. am I not to do it? Okay. Then, Jesus was a healer by his word because he's God. So, when he went to pray and he was there for the people, he only gave his word, the word of God. And by his touch and his word, he was healing people. Again, what are Beit Marun doing in the wilderness? They are imitating Jesus. If our people needs to be healed, we understand as monks that we can go directly outside. We need to go with Jesus to, to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and defeat him and receive the word of God. And by the humility, we ask Jesus to go with us outside. And then by our words, Prayed words, meditated words, that we can give you the word of God that can heal you. I'm not the healer. He's the healer. So I'm guiding you to the word of God. Okay? Let's think more. When Moses was uh, uh, led his people out of Egypt in order to go to the liberty, right? He stopped at a certain moment at that mountain where the glory of God wa was ev was everywhere on that That's mountain. That's right, for how long? In the, in the, he went for how long? For, 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 ah, on the mountain, yeah, yeah. 40 days. Yes, that's right. For how many days was Jesus in the wilderness? 40 days. 40 days. Ah, that means a lot of things. Okay, 
So he was there alone on the mountain. And no one, even the animals, were allowed to touch that mountain because that mountain was consecrated, was for God. So he went there and he saw the glory of God, but the most important, he was fasting and he, wa he received the Ten Commandments. It's very important. Mm. When he went down from the, that mountain, he was speaking of his, uh, his experience, he was speaking of the commandment of God, the will of God in order that the people will be healed. So God gave him the commandments after the 40 days. Yes, sure. So that's, that's your answer. Yes. So when Jesus went to the mountain, he went down to give the word of God. Oh, wow. What are we doing? Okay, so you're going out to as the wilderness. Moses, as Jesus, as St. Charbil, we are there to receive the word of God in order when we are outside the monastery, we never speak of worldly things. And we don't speak our, about ourselves. We only speak what is the word of God for the glory of God in order to heal the people. So powerful. For the glory of God. This is the, the only way to do it. So now, are we doing this for us? Or does Lebanon or Australia or the whole world need monks to be there? Definitely. This is what why we need monks. And many other monks are living like that. Not, not only Beit Marun. We just started. Many other monks lived for many centuries like that. And this is the, the way monks live the, their, their life, which is very, very nice because they are imitating Jesus for the glory of the people, for the good of the people, the glory of the Trinity. Okay? Thank you, Abuna. Thank you very much. Uh, you. Very powerful. And we have to go because of the time, but we'd love to have you back on one day in the sure. future again to I'd discuss to more. Talk. Um, thank you for everyone watching. Please, um, let's continue all praying for Bat Maroon as Bat Maroon is praying for us. Uh, like and subscribe on Stanford Truth Podcast. Share this video if you like it. God bless you all. Majdaleh. Daimalaleh.